and welcome to the UFC, to the former Fury FC flyweight champ. We have CJ Vergara making his promotional debut, taking on the Jamaican sensation Ode Osborne. And for money's worth, this is one of those fights you have to get excited about coming up this weekend because if you look at it for Ode Osborne, the guy is kill or be killed. He's a walking action man, and I absolutely love what he does and when he's doing it in the octagon. Unfortunately for Ode, you look at the UFC results, he gets submitted by Brian Kelleher, not so bad. Then he knocks out Jerome Rivera up two weight classes but one to where he normally was that one was at featherweight and his last time out he takes on manel cop in an absolutely amazing fight on paper and at the start Ode had a lot of success but he was making that flyweight debut he cut the weight manel cop didn't he weighed in a little bit heavy Either way, Manel Kopp wins that fight in impressive fashion. So for Ode Osborne, goes back to the drawing board. This is a guy that's a school teacher. This is a guy that trains at a Pura Vida, BJJ, and MMA with the likes of the Zach Ottos of the world. With Jamie Simmons that's in the UFC. There, there are plenty of fighters at Pura Vida, BJJ, including a former member of Fight Night Picks. You know her as Hot Take Kate. She spent a lot of time at Pura Vida, BJJ. But for Osborne... When he's fighting and when he's at his best, you talk about silhouettes and fighters. Very, very unique, very long, very good with his long-range weapons. And if it goes to the ground, he's a guy that you really have to be worried about if you're his opponent. Comes into this fight taking on CJ Vergara. And you talk about a guy who has a lot of fun fight tape to go back and watch. You look at how he booked his ticket into the UFC. It was a win on this past season of Dana White's Contender Series against a guy that used to be in the UFC that was on the Ultimate Fighter, Bruno Cohea. And if you look at that fight, man, wow. I mean, CJ was a big, big enough underdog in that one. Everybody was going with Cohea. And in that one, knee to the body, sends his opponent away, hammers away some more, lands another knee to the body, and that was all she oh. wrote. For CJ Vergara, it is absolutely kill or be killed in his fights. Not just that fight on Contender Series. Again, I had absolutely a ton of pleasure going back and watching his fights. This should be a great fight. I don't know how this fight's going to be boring. And I'm so glad you set it up this way. Because both guys do have that kill or be killed style. Like, Jimmy Mano was probably really happy this fight got put together. With Ode Osborne, I can openly admit that every time I think he's going to win, he seems to lose. And every time I think he's going to lose, he seems to win. And I don't feel like I have that bad of a read on his skills. Like you said, he's a good long-range striker. He can switch stances a little bit, although he does lack some defensive abilities when he does decide to move his feet that way. But my issue with Ode Osborne is it just seems defensively he's lacking in a lot of areas. And it's not just the defensive side of striking. Even his defensive grappling isn't great. And that's the weird thing about Ode Osborne. He is a dangerous fighter on the mat, but he's one of those guys who can be held down. He can sort of be out physiqued at this weight class. And I guess this is really the question that I do want to give to you. Do you think he's cutting too much weight to get down to 125 pounds? Because when he's fighting, he is such a big guy for this weight class. His frame is massive. Do you think he could be one of these guys who just suffers a negative effect? because he does get down to 125 well when other than his last fight I, is he fought at 125 that's the thing i just think i i don't know who kind of led him to the decision he's always talked about you know i am a 125 or eventually i'll move down there and then finally he does he gets his chin checked by one of the better strikers that was outside of the ufc and now i feel like manel cop kind of came onto the scene with that win over osborne people are going to forget about the weight miss but the trouble i have in a fight like this Neither one of these guys is all that, I don't know, leveled up in terms of their striking defense or wrestling defense. So I think skill for skill, they match up incredibly well together. No, I agree 100%. Ode Osborne's going to have a really hard time keeping his range in this fight. And that really should be his key throughout this matchup. Because if he is able to keep Vergara on the outstretch of his shots, we saw in the Rivera fight. Now, yes, Rivera didn't have the best run in the UFC. I can already hear the people in the comments section. But still, if you just take the positives from that match, up like Ode Osborne could be a serious threat if you do match up his submission ability especially his defensive submission abilities you think okay if he could get slightly better wrestling defense then maybe he could be one of these guys who can light fighters up at the outstretch of his reach and when they do decide to close that distance he could rely on some of his submission abilities my issue with Osborne though is exactly what you said it's his lack of defensive wrestling which then sort of opens up his lack of defensive striking I think if Fergar can get on the inside of Osborne's striking range he's gonna have a really easy time 
time going to the body, going to the head of Osborne, because this is one of those Teddy Atlas points. If you're fighting a skyscraper, you're going to have to take some windows down. And that really is the key when you're taking on a guy like Osborne. If you do go to the legs and go to the body, limit some of that dynamic movement of his, I think it's a much more winnable fight for CJ. Well, for CJ Vergara, going back, doing the tape study on him, because you can't just watch that Dana White's Contender Series fight, although it was a great one against a UFC caliber those fighter. Those body knees are gross. Former UFC fighter. But if you look at it for Vergara, his head coach is Pete Spratt at a Pete Spratt's Muay Thai. And if you know that name, and I'll say it again, Pete Spratt, Pete Spratt, Spratt see, I can't do it even more than twice. Too quick. He beat Robbie Lawler in the UFC, and then his next fight was in TKO, and he lost to George St. Pierre. So, yeah, He's that, right that Pete Spratt. But when you look at it, for Vergara, very, very good striking, very good movement on the feet. I like the way that he moves his head, and he kind of... He doesn't plot forward, but he does kind of move at odd angles. So to try and hit him is difficult, but he leaves his hands wide open and he gets hit a lot. And the fight that I went back to all the time was a fight when he took on Silva. And I wrote it down, Matt, because in that fight, and listen, that wasn't that long ago. Again, Jacob Silva, Fury FC, that was for the belt. And man, he had a rough go. I mean, for Silva even, he fought on Contender Series a couple of times. He lost a split decision to Jeff Molina. Okay, and then he got finished by GP Bays. Okay, I guess. So then he goes back to the regional scene. He dropped CJ Vergara in that fight. Not a one time, but twice in the first round. Almost has him finished. And then in the second, he starts to kind of fall off a little bit. That's when CJ starts to have some success. And of course, CJ wins that fight. But I just go back through it. He's super, super aggressive. And he's so focused on getting that finish that defensively, it just leaves a lot to be desired, especially against the high-level guys in this weight class. So the way that I look at this fight is that if Osborne can catch him coming on the way in, I think he can win this fight by finish. And I wouldn't be surprised at all if Osborne did win this by crazy highlight reel. Think like Dwight Grant, Carlo Petersoli, where he like ducked under the high kick, hit him with an overhand. Something ridiculous like that. My issue is that other than that one big action on the way in for Vergara, I actually think CJ can win rounds in this fight if he can get on the inside of Osborne's range. Because if Osborne was a slightly better wrestler himself, if he did have some ways to just stop the forward momentum of Vergara, I would like him in this matchup a little bit more. But I'm finding myself siding with the underdog and with the guy making his UFC debut because I just haven't loved what I've seen from Osborne throughout his UFC career. I really like him when he can establish that range, but we've seen too many guys get on the inside of it. For Vergara, I mean, Coming into this one, five wins in a row, all five of them by finish. Six of his nine wins total by finish. And he's had a lot of different little layoffs due to injuries. He talked about that before his contender series fight. He had a big ACL tear a number of years ago. So just something to look out for as his career progresses. You might actually find it surprising if you weren't looking at the graphics. Maybe you're just listening on iTunes and Spotify. Yes. We have a podcast. The fact that Vergara is actually the older fighter coming into this one. Matt, you tipped everybody off. The odds for this one. Vergara opened the underdog plus 130s, plus 142 right now. Osborne opened a minus 150s, minus 172. We have not looked at the topology votes. They're going to be a surprise to us. They are to you. I'm going to say 65% over under going with Osborne. I was thinking 60% Osborne, so I'll say under. Yeah, look at that. 989 total wow. votes, 63% Vergara, 72% by knockout. For the 37% that have Osborne, 37% by decision, 37% by knockout, 17% by submission. Three sevens in a row, that doesn't make for 100%, but they never really do over on Topology. For me, when I look at this fight, again, everything that I have in my notes, I really do like Vergara. Good check left hook, good footwork, good head movement. His hands drop after a combination, which is how Odie Osborne capitalizes in a lot of different exchanges. He's been dropped in a number of different fights. I think Silva, Jacob Silva's a good fighter. Don't get me wrong. Losing to Jeff Molina by split decision and losing to JP Bays in Contender Series, water off a duck's back. That's cool. You deserve to be in there. Beating Bruno Correa, too. That's a good win. The guy's record was, what, 12-3-1 going into that fight? And I wrote down the odds for that one. Correa was a minus 200 favorite. So, again... Vergara's come through as an underdog in his last fight. I just really don't like how much he gets hit. I don't like how much he drops his hands. I like Odie Osborne here. And the other thing that I like out of Osborne is his kicking game. Could it get caught or could it get him caught, especially with a counter from Vergara? There's a possibility. But once he establishes distance, I'm assuming that's going to happen. I like Osborne for those reasons. I think Vergara is going to be a fun 50-50 fighter in the UFC. 
but that's about all I have for you. Yeah, I don't think Vergara is going to get into, like, the top 12 range. I guess you could say top 15 at this, because, like, one or two wins in Flyway can basically get you just cracking that top 15, but I do think Vergara can get this win over Osborne. Like you said, range is going to be the really big factor for both guys. If Osborne can keep Vergara on the outside of his range, just sort of taking pot shots at him, setting up his kicking game like you had mentioned, he should have a lot of success, but if Vergara can get on the inside of that, because the great thing about forward pressure is it is really hard to throw kicks if you are moving backwards, so if Vergara can establish his range, get on the inside, start going to the body a lot. It should be able to set up a game plan for him to win, but this really is a 50-50 fight. I do see, I could see a world where either guy wins via TKO very easily. Winner fights Bruno Silva, loser fights Alon Nascimento. Easy peasy, go. lemon squeezy Matt. We're split on the pick. I'm going with Ode Osborne. You're going with CJ Vergara. Let us know down below in the comment section who you have in this fight. Make sure you tune in to Question Mark Kicks two hours before the prelims this weekend. Final picks and predictions and the fight companions. Keep it locked in with Fight Night Picks. We always say, let's, let's get, get into it. it.